Good morning, everybody, and welcome to part two of Dratnos's primer for Railcraft, a Minecraft mod. So, over here, let's just get right into it, because why not? Over here, we have a cart dispenser. The way a cart dispenser works is that you plonk it down, and then it uh, faces out to one side, and you can put carts inside it. Uh, it's got an inventory for three carts. And then when you supply it power, if there's no cart in front of it, it deploys one from its inventory. And if there is a cart in front of it, it eats it up back into the inventory. So that's pretty cool. You can supply it with the redstone power, and it'll toggle basically whether there's a cart in front of it or not. And you can use a rail here to boost them out of the way if you want. So it's, uh, that's pretty cool. Cart dispenser. Now over here we have an item loader. Now item loaders work with, uh, with gravity. So the way it works is you put an item loader above a storage cart, or where you want a storage cart to be. There's a rail under there. And um, then you put something, let's say, let's say we want to add uh, cookies. Cookie. Ooh, cookie. Cookie. There it is, cookie. Let's say we want to add some cookies to this. We just plonk it in here. It'll eat it up through here and drop it into our chest cart. So a uh, very useful little tool there. Uh, worth noting that when it gets to, uh, you, you can have it set up so that it sends out redstone currents. And basically the way it's designed to work is that you put a boarding or a holding rail below here, and then it'll keep it unpowered while the cart's empty, and it'll power it up when it's full, and you can change those behaviors as you want uh, by toggling this. But the basic idea is that it comes under, fills it up, and then releases it out. Um, now over here, this is the item unloader. It works basically the same as that. Again, uses gravity, so it's below the uh, chest here. And you can see if we just put cookies in here, it'll unload them through the item unloader into a nearby inventory. It's also worth noting that both of these work with buildcraft pipes as well as chests. Uh, now over here, we have uh, a few advanced blocks, the advanced item loader and the advanced item unloader. They don't require gravity, but they have a more complex recipe that requires more materials. And basically, they work the same way, except they can load to the side. Um, and same, same options for both of them. Uh, they can send out the redstone current, basically, when they're done doing their job. And that'll let a boarding rail launch your cart out. So if we put something in here, it'll load it in through here, into this, and then out through here, through there. So you can set up a pretty cool, like, gate system here, where... You don't load things from one side to the other unless there's a cart in the middle. Or you can, do, you can do so many different things with this. Now I'm going to show you a few different kinds of carts. So in here we have TNT carts, because, because that's a good idea. Uh, and you can see I filled them up, this dispenser up with some TNT carts. Very simple little, uh, little cart made just putting some TNT in your minecart. And I've designed a little system here. So when I push this button, it'll deploy a cart, send a redstone signal out through these repeaters over here, and release the boarding rail which will shoot the cart this way, then this is a priming rail. The way a priming rail works is that when a TNT cart goes over a priming rail that's powered, it primes the TNT. And you can actually adjust how many ticks you want the fuse to be by clicking there, so we'll keep it at 100 ticks. And here, then, we've got a launcher rail. So this is what I like to call the America Cannon. And uh, let's see how it works. Boom. Oh, isn't that, isn't that nice? Look at that. Yes, that was us. We just made that crater. So there's, uh, there's your TNT carts as part of the, uh, the lovely America cannon that we have there. Let's, uh, let's adjust some settings and see if we can't send this out. 20. Go. Go. Ooh, I think the fuse is a bit short on that one. Let's increase the fuse up to uh, 230 ticks and increase the force to 30. Fire the last shot of the America cannon. Where's it going? Where's it going? Let's see if we can't sprint and see where this lands before it unloads. Ooh, I heard that. Wow. Oh, nice. Awesome. So yes, there's, uh, there's your TNT cart. Very useful. Explosive. Very awesome. Um, let's see what we have here. We have here, we have just a, a seam cart. It's just a modified version. Like, it's not even really modified of the original Minecraft furnace cart. You just grab some coal. You have coal in your hand, and clicky, and you can go around. It's worth noting that with, uh, with Railcraft, you can use a crowbar to link together multiple carts, so you can actually design a train that's pulled from the front, for instance, just by right-clicking on this cart and one behind it. So yes, there's your uh, furnace cart. I'm going to go ahead and stop that, because it's, it's moving very rapidly. Also, I'm going to turn the sound down, because I assume that that might have been uh, bleeding your ears a little bit. Anyways, furnace cart, very cool. Over here, we have energy carts. So there are three different types of energy carts. They work with Industrial Craft 2, so you need to have the Industrial Craft 2 module installed. If you're using Technic, that'll be by default, 
But if you're not, then you'll need to do some stuff to make sure that that all works. Anyways, uh, this is a bat box cart here. It's basically a bat box in a cart. And then this is an MFE in a cart. And this is an MFSU in a cart. They're basically just upgraded versions of, of uh, energy carts. Weakest, middling, strongest. Um, and they can hold energy. Now you can either put a battery straight in here and charge it up and pull it out again. Or you can use energy loaders and unloaders, which are basically the same. What I've designed here is a little system. These shouldn't even be necessary, actually. Where uh, this, this energy loader has some, uh, some in it. It'll set the thing up so that it'll wait if the cart is empty. And then uh, once it's full, it should shoot it out. Um, and then over here, this one will wait until it's empty and shoot it out. So if we send this over here, it'll get caught here until it's fully loaded. Then shot to here, where it'll unload. And uh, let's see that in action. So it lands here. All the energy goes into the bat box cart. And boop, over there. And the energy gets unloaded and into the unloader. So yes, and then the unloader, of course, loads it back into the loader because the loader is right next door. And we have a nice little infinite loop of, uh, of cart awesomeness. I'm going to go ahead and intercept it here so that that loop stops. But yes, that's your energy loader and unloader. It's worth noting that the only reason that the loader took the power from the unloader is because it's right next to it. Whew, okay. So here we have... Uh, we have liquid cart, or tank carts, which are, this is buildcraft. You need the buildcraft module installed to work with this part. Again, by default in Technic Pack, it will be. So what we have here is a, a tank cart. A tank cart holds eight buckets. A regular tank block ha holds 16. So this holds one fourth of this capacity. And if we just grab uh, some fuel cans here, let's take half of these. And just fill up our lovely little uh, tank thing here. It'll start pumping it out with that waterproof pipe into a liquid loader. This is a liquid loader here, which is then just loading it into our, uh, into our cart here. And then once the cart's full, it should shoot it out by default, although it, w it isn't because there isn't a, a boarding pipe below there. So let's just wait for this thing to fill up and then we'll manually push it. Let's go. I'll just delete that so that it can stop. Oop. So that it can stop. Oh, God. I should really have put a boarding pipe down this there boarding rail, shouldn't I? Yes, I should have. But you can see. Uh let me let me go ahead and do that actually. Boarding rail. Boarding. Boarding. Boarding rail. There we go. Lovely. Plonk down a boarding rail there, and we'll just do one here as well. And this way now, what it'll do is it'll go over here until it's empty. Yes, see it's unloading it through there. Nice and automatically. Again, buildcraft ones require you to use gravity. Industrial craft ones don't, but because it's a liquid, buildcraft requires uh, the unloaders to be below the cart and the loaders to be above the cart. So now it's unloading this uh, through there, and then when it's finished, it shoots it back over here to reload up through here, and then when it's full, it'll shoot back around there. And it's pretty awesome. You can transport liquids very easily with this kind of setup. Cool. Uh, now, over here, we have elevator rails. So, let me go ahead and set it to day, because day is nice. Elevator rails, very cool. Uh, by default, they function just as a ladder if you want to go up them. It's very cool. Uh, it's worth noting again that if you try to plonk down like this, it won't actually make that bond. The way you, you make a bond with elevator rails is you have to put the elevator rail down after, and then it makes that little bond here so that the things can go up. Anyways, elevator rails, when they're unpowered, any cart that goes on them... Let me go ahead and just grab this mine cart here. Any cart that goes on an elevator rail when it's unpowered... Let me just jump up to here. Yes, awesome. When it's unpowered, we'll just uh, put that here. We'll just head on right down the elevator rail. Uh, elevator rail. Yeah, there it is. See? Gets shot down like that. It, it wasn't going very fast, so sometimes it's a little bit buggy. And then when the elevator rail is powered, and you can power the elevator rail and all sections below the one you power automatically, so it powers here, will power all the way down there. Here will power all of it. So let's power it up to here. When it is powered, It'll go ahead and shoot your thing upwards. It'll shoot any cart that goes on it in the upwards direction. And so there it is. It sent it to that second floor because we powered it up to the second floor. Uh, let me go ahead and grab that cart. So, uh, you can design a pretty cool system here. Because now, if you send something from the top, it'll go to that second floor. Uh, because it, it's powered below that part. So if we do this, bloop, either from the bottom or the top because it's powered to here, we'll go to the second floor here. And if we powered all the elevator rail, everything would go up to the third floor, regardless of where it was coming from. So, for instance, and that, that switch is now irrelevant. If we then shoot something like this that way, it goes all the way up to the top there. Awesome. Yes, very cool. 
go ahead and just grab that, and it would do the same thing if we shot it from the bottom. So that's the elevator rail. Elevator rail. And you can see here, yeah, we've moved almost all of this liquid now over to uh, this tank over here by use of our loader and unloader. And it's been shooting it all around awesomely. So over here we have switch rails. Switch rails are pretty cool. Uh, they come in wooden, high speed, and regular varieties. Uh, it's worth noting that if you try to make a, use a switch rail and your cart's going at high speed, if you try to make it do a turn, it'll explode still. But you can design something where it, like, it slows it down if it's going to take the turn and then re-speeds it up. And so for that reason, sometimes it'll be going straight, and you'll still want to have high-speed rail. So that's uh, perfectly acceptable. So a switch rail, it's, it's just like this. If you shoot it along here, and the switch rail's one way, it goes that way. And then you can't actually modify a switch rail by right-clicking it. You have to use a switch lever or a switch motor. A switch lever, you just right-click, and it changes the state of that switch. So now it'll go this way. See? And if we change it again, now it'll go this way. Or you can use a switch motor, which is not powered manually, but by redstone. Very easy. And uh, it's effectively the same thing here, because I've got a lever next to it, but you could design an actual circuit that changes how things work. And so this will be the same thing. It'll either have you go straight, or in a nice turning little pattern there. Very cool. So there's your, uh, your switch rails, and your elevator rail, and your TNT carts, and all your other weird carts. You see now it's finally finished moving everything over here, and it's waiting to be loaded with more liquid. Which we could do, I suppose, although this doesn't have enough capacity to add any more fuel to it. So we've moved all the fuel from here to here, basically, and we've done it without using much pipes at all. Now, what I haven't shown you, uh, signaling. Signaling is a very complex concept, and I'll discuss that later. Uh, tunnel bores. Tunnel bores are basically mine carts, sort of. They're basically carts, and you, uh, you, you have them go forward, and they'll automatically lay track behind them and mine out whatever's in front of them. So you can use them to just tunnel straight through and gather you resources. Uh, and you, you give them fuel and stuff, and you give them gravel to cover any holes they find. And yeah, it's, very, it's a pretty useful tool. I haven't shown you a feed station either. A feed station isn't really a rail thing, but it's added by Railcraft to make automatic farms possible. And what it'll do is it'll basically feed any, uh, any animal in range. Uh, and it's very cool. So yes. Those are what I haven't shown you. Now, what I do next episode is up to you guys. I'm going to have a Facebook poll on my Facebook page. And what you can do is you can either pick a mod, or you can tell me to show you signaling. Signaling is very complicated. Uh, I actually don't really understand it myself, but I'm willing to if you guys, if you guys want to see how that works. Signaling is added by Railcraft, and basically it lets you uh, figure out where carts are in your system and design complex uh, little signals because of that, ba based on where your carts are on different tracks. So I can either show you that or another mod. And if you're interested in, if, if you have an opinion or anything, check out my Facebook page. Link's in the description. And uh, vote on that poll for the next few days, and I'll, uh, I'll do the next primer based on what you guys want, what you guys want to see. Um, I believe that's everything. So let's, uh, let's fire the America Cannon one more time. TNT cart, let's just spawn in three of those. Oh, Railcraft increases your max stack of carts to three, by the way, which is uh, very useful. And we'll just stick those in the cart dispenser. America. Awesome. We should, let's see what the crater looks like. Boom. Oh yes, look at that. Let's go take a look. There's your TNT carts. And, oh, they've been hitting water, so they haven't been doing any damage beyond those first few. Okay, well, that's a shame. Still great, though. Thanks, everybody, for watching. This has been Veilcraft. My name has been uh, Dratnos. It still is Dratnos, and it will continue to be Dratnos. Goodbye.